Hey guys, I'm just going to give you a really quick introduction to this awesome preprocessor I just found called TSQL. And so basically how it works is it allows you to use an SQL Lite database um, within a trough or a graph file. And so basically all SQL Lite is is a database um, that is used in a bunch of different programs um, and it has a library that's really popular and it's a pretty awesome database. It's not amazing for large amounts of files and stuff like that, but I'm sure you guys are not planning on using a over a terabyte sized file or a database with this. Anyways, so let's take a little look at it. So how the preprocessor works is it allows you to basically write SQL inside your file. So this right here is a bunch of SQL requests that are processed and then it gives back a bunch of data. All right, and it allows you to actually create tables based on a uh, SQLite database, and you can make your own database uh, within it. So this is really cool if you guys wanted to try and do some really advanced stuff with uh, trough, but found storing stuff like arrays kind of difficult to do because there isn't really a built-in way to do it, as far as I know. And so this is where something like this could actually be useful. It also would be useful if you guys have uh, an SQLite database already that you want to be able to pull information from. This is another use case for it. There's a bunch of really cool use cases, and I'll show you some of them. Now it can it can do more than just making um, a table, which is what it does here. It can actually be used to create a uh, register, so like a number that you guys can use within your graph file. It can also create strings that you guys can use within your trough file. So make sure to check it out. It's actually like a lot more powerful than I originally thought it would be. I just thought this would be a cool idea for a video, but this surpassed my expectations. Anyways guys, if you're interested in quirky little tricks and cool programs like this that use Unix and other command line tools, uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications, and like this video so you guys can see more. So how you guys are going to go ahead and install it is you're going to do git clone, and then the URL to tsql on github, which I will put in the description. And I already have it cloned, so we're just going to go there. So we're going to go cd into tsql, and so we're just going to cd in. All right, we do an ls and we will see that there is a demo directory that you guys should all look at. It has a really good explanation on um, basically all the features that this has so you guys can try it out. And we're just gonna go edit the make file, like I said before. And so in the make file, you guys will see that there is a bunch of um, different information that you guys can set. The big one to look at is prefix and uh, the different directories that it uses with prefix. So it's set to home.local, and then it will use your .local bin directory by default and your .local share man directory. Now, I personally prefer to keep all my stuff in user um, slash local, and then that puts this in user slash local slash bin, and then user slash local slash man. Now, you guys don't have to do this. Um, this is basically where the uh, binary, so the actual program is going to be located, and this is where the manual will be located. You guys can change these however you want, right? And then we're just going to go make, which will create tsql, and then we're going to go sudo make make install. Now this is only if you guys needed to store it in a directory that only the sudo user has access to. So if you use just dot local, then you guys don't need the sudo, probably, unless you have some weird permission set up that I don't know about. Now we have tsql installed, so now we can actually do man tsql, and we will see the manual page for it, which is pretty neat. And it covers most of the stuff that we'll be covering in this video. So something you guys should know about how to use tsql is you're actually going to have to um, pipe through it. If I use tsql on a file, we'll run into an issue where um, it's not actually going to understand it. So if I do tm, I don't know, I probably have some, there we go, temporary. And it's going to give us um, this bunch of this information. So what we're going to do instead is we're actually going to go ahead and pipe into this. So we're going to go cat and pipe into tsql and then pipe that into graph or whatever trough you're using. And you're going to need to pre-process. So when I say that, I mean you're going to need to use a tbl with it in order to create a table. And then you're going to pipe that into graph and then tpdf to create a pdf with it. And there's our pdf. So we're going to go ahead and look at an example really quick. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do um, SQL DB and then give it a, um, a database to use. So we're going to use memory, which basically means use this as a temporary one. This won't need to be saved. This will just be used for this file. Um, so that means that we don't have to have anything already stored, right? And so let's just label that. So store info. So when we open up the file, you guys will know what's going on where. And then next we're going to do 
uh, SQL begin, so SQL BG as our command, as our macro. And then we're going to basically uh, create a database. We're going to create table. This is just me creating um, a table that will be used in our database called fam. And we're going to store a name. That's a text file. And then uh, an ID. That's an integer. It's our primary key. And so then we're going to insert into fam, which is our table. And we're going to insert a name. And the values are Gavin, Chris, and Greg. Now next we're going to look at how to create a table. So for those of you guys that have watched my TBL um, introduction, it's basically a preprocessor that creates tables. And this is what you guys are going to use to create tables that you can actually see in Groth that represent parts of your database. So we're going to use the TBL, uh, TBL um, macro, so dot .ts. And then I'm just going to use all box to try and make it clear what's separated. And then cc. And then in this case, we're going to be getting a name and an ID. So name and ID. And then this is where we actually do the SQL portion of it. So we do dot SQL TBL and then dot SQL end. So all the SQL stuff ends with a dot SQL end. All right. And so here we're saying select all, which is represented by the star from fam. And then we're ending that with a semi with a semicolon. Same thing as every other command that we run in SQL has to end with a semicolon. This is a full SQL tutorial, but if you guys don't know SQL, don't worry. This is actually pretty simple, and you guys will kind of get the hang of it if you want to try it out. This is a really good way to learn. So you guys probably want to see um, what this turns out as. So let's go ahead and give you a better example. This will make a lot more sense when you see what it looks like. So we're going to go um, cat, because remember, we can't just give TSQL a file. We're going to go cat our file into TSQL, pipe that into Groth. Dash T. Actually, just to make things more clear, we're going to go TBL, pipe that into Groth, and then dash T PDF. And then we're going to put that all into this file.pdf. And let's take a look at that. And there we go. This is, so we did store info. So that's back up here. And then we have our table that we just created right here. So as you guys can see, this was not very much complexity. It might seem a bit confusing, but if you guys mix stuff around, like say for example, we each take out some of the parts from the same Gavin, then it removes it from there. Pretty simple stuff. So try playing around with this. I'll put this file in the uh, description so you guys can access it. So now you're probably wondering what this other stuff is down here. And so this is some other stuff I've set up that you guys can actually try out as well. So some of the other really cool things that you can do with TSQL is you can actually store strings and uh, registers. So to store a register, you can just do dot in R um, saying name register, and we're going to give it uh, ID is the name of it. We're going to give it a value of five. And then we can actually print it out just by doing backslash N brace brace uh, ID. If you guys uh, have no idea what I'm talking about, um, go ahead and check out my video on macros all in the card above. And it should explain a lot more of this stuff, but this is just some stuff that you guys can try out. So we're going to do backslash nr id equals 5, and then backslash nid. And that would actually, if we create our file again, we open it up. And so there we go. So our 5 right here is just printed out, and that's basically what's stored in this register. Pretty neat. Now, where this 2 is coming from is we actually used um, tsql to store a value. So here I'm basically saying uh, sql nr which is basically the same thing as nr, but SQL before it. Then we give it an ID, and then we give it our SQL request, and then it ends with .sql end. So here we're saying uh, select ID from fam, which was our table, if you guys didn't see that before. So we're selecting the ID from fam, which is this whole table right here, with the name of Chris. So we're saying get the ID from here. So we should get it too. And as you can see, we're printing it out right here. And that's giving us a 2. Now we can do a similar thing with a string by doing dot .ds for the name of the string. We're going to go name, and we're going to give a different name. We're going to go Glenn, and then backslash. And instead of an S, which I feel would make the most sense, they used a star in Groff and trough, but who knows where that came from. And then name. Obviously, an S would have kind of made a bit more sense, or D but instead it's a star, and you kind of just get used to it. I think of it as star for string. Um, but anyways, so you do star name, and if we run that again, we'll see that it prints out Glenn. Pretty neat. So we can do the same sort of thing 
using tsql like right here so just like before sql ds for define string we're going to name the string name and here's our sql request so we're going to go select name from fam our database or our table and then we're going to say where id is two pretty simple so if we go over here we see our table we go to id we see where it's two and that's chris so now when we run this we will see that it prints out chris pretty, pretty neat Anyways, guys, uh, there wasn't very much to cover in this video, but I really wanted to show this off because it was just such a cool idea for a project that somebody had made, and I figured they deserved some recognition. Anyways, guys, if you're interested in cool tools like this, make sure to go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications, and hit the like so that way you guys can like this video and it helps support the channel.